Oh, oh, baby, spin them wheels. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're going to be prepping for Hurricane Hillary, which is going to hit the uh, basically Southern California. This is uh, two days before Hurricane Hillary is projected to make landfall in Southern California. Uh, the clouds look uh, normal here, as you can see, but it's going to get a lot worse, so hang on. And I'm actually going to show you someone that almost died in this hurricane. Now, if you're wondering, uh, what's the big deal? These clouds look fine, and it's just a hurricane. Who cares? You know, hurricanes have happened before around the rest of the country. What's the big deal? Well, they haven't happened in Southern California or California at all. So, a hurricane has never hit California in recorded history at all. So, this is unprecedented, uh, this sort of forecast. And the only other time a tropical storm has hit California was in the 1930s. So if Hillary is uh, going to hit California as a tropical storm, uh, which, it, which it's projected to do, then it would still make history. This is a really serious deal. Um, so I'm on the tractor here and I'm going to begin to uh, talk about... Uh, what I'm trying to do here to prepare. Now, preparation is key, and again, uh, we'll take a look after the hurricane hits in the GX460, so hang on to the end of the video to see the aftermath as well. But let's get to this preparation here, so um, the, the people who may not be familiar go, what's the big deal? It's a hurricane, who cares? It's just a hurricane, blah, 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 blah. The problem <laughs> with that is, uh, you know, where a hurricane, a hurricane's not supposed to be in the desert. <laughs> and the hurricane is not, a hurricane is not supposed to be in the mountains. And California, Southern California has both in the path of the hurricane. The issue with a hurricane in the desert is flooding. Now, there's nowhere for the water to go. You've heard weather people say that, weathermen, meteorologists. There's nowhere for the water to go, and that's true. There are no lakes or rivers for um, the water to uh, drain into, nor is there organic soil for uh, this water to kind of soak up and, and leach down into. What happens instead is you basically get runoff and you get flash flooding. Now, flash flooding is dangerous. It's not a trivial, oh, that's just some running water, oh, flash flooding. Flash flooding kills people out here in, quote, normal monsoon seasons, seasons as we call them out here. So in other words, every August, it will rain out here. That's our, quote, rainy season in the desert. And this is the Mojave Desert, by the way. So we'll get this rainy season and we'll get these flash floods and people die every year. Every year that I've been here, people have died because this water uh, will take away anything in its path. Your car, your SUV, whatever you got, your Jeep, if you're in the path of this raging flash flood type of water, it will pick you up and wash you away. So here I am on the Kubota, which is the Toyota of tractors, by the way, in case you didn't know. <laughs> And I'm making this giant berm, as you can see, and that's to direct the water that is expected to rush down the road here. And it's to divert it into this natural wash, which I'm clearing out here. Now, don't be concerned about these bushes. They're native bushes, and they do grow back. It's, they don't take a million <laughs> years to grow back. So uh, don't feel sad for the bush. We've got to clear out any resistance in this channel or waterway that I'm uh, digging out and I'm basically widening it so the water uh, can flow in easier and then taking out the resistance these bushes that have grown over the years and this um, this area that I'm clearing out it can it is a natural wash I'm just widening it widening in widening it's hard to say making it wider <laughs> and then as you can see ahead of the tractor um, 
if we go down in it, it's, it, you know, it, it'll drain basically downhill. So all this is downhill and it drains into a natural watch. Now, all we got to do is let Hillary come and those clouds are looking a little bit more sketch as time goes on. So we're kind of up against the clock as these clouds start to form and things start to get a little bit more ominous. But this water has to find a place to go or it'll flood. Once it floods, that's when that's when the dangerous and even stuff happens and even death happens. Now, to prepare, I mean, you can see the clouds are getting sketchy here, so it's off to the gas station, basically. So we're in the GX here as the storm approaches. So we're up against the clock here. We only got about two days warning, and this is day one. So after we grade uh, that path for the flood water to go, and again, the flood water is the main concern. Nobody in Southern California cares about winds or, oh, a hurricane, wow, it's going to be 100 mile per hour winds. No, that's not the concern at all. The only concern is this. You can see them clouds popping off <laughs> in the background. You know, the lightning's beginning to form. And when that, that, uh, those clouds start dumping water, that's the issue. So it's not the hurricane. It's those hurricane clouds and how much water that's going to bring and how much flash flooding, dangerous flash flooding, that that could cause to millions of people. Again, the topography is not supposed to have tropical stuff in it. <laughs> There's no, we don't have tropical deserts and tropical mountains. So uh, preparation is key, and um, it's better to be safe than sorry. So gassing up the GX here. I know this is everybody's favorite thing to do. <laughs> is gas up their GX with premium fuel, but treat it nice, and it'll treat <laughs> treat you nice too. But no. This is uh, just being on the safe side in case we got to get out, in case we got to rescue people, because people will get stuck as the storm happens. You can see the palm trees there uh, going crazy in the distance. The clouds, those clouds might look normal to you, but they shouldn't be in the desert uh, this time of year. So those are, uh, for being in the desert, those are some sketchy clouds. The wind's picking up. Um, and uh, getting the GX ready to go. The, uh, you know, you're going to have... Unfortunately, off-roaders go out and get stuck, or regular people get stuck uh, once the storm hits. So we're getting diesel here as well to uh, have to uh, to be on hand for the tractor, essentially. So it's getting some extra diesel for the Kubota tractor in order to mitigate any flood damage, uh, essentially while it happens. So I can hop back on the tractor and <laughs> repair or dig or do whatever I need to do as needed. Look at those clouds. You know, it's coming. It's weird stuff. So now we just wait, wait for Hillary to get here and see how bad it is. And the storm, look at this, look at the lightning. And that's Hillary approaching, very active. And uh, she's coming now. She's here. Let's check out Hillary here. And, uh... Everything we did, and uh, you'll see why I did why I did what I did. We got a river out here. We got a river where I was grading. You can see my tractor marks. Look at that. Look at that. Not supposed to happen in the desert. And this is the big concern, and it's just started. So this is the big concern out here. People go, oh, it's rain. What's the big deal? I'll show you right here. Erosion. So you can see, okay, it wants to, wants to take it right away. And this is gonna keep happening. It hasn't even made landfall yet but we got a freaking river, a flowing river. It's been splitting off into two directions, one that way, one that way. Let's go upstream. And you'll get an even better idea. It has it. So upstream, we just got another flash flood warning, so 
This will carry you and your vehicle right away. This is what we're talking about. That's only going to get keep getting bigger. Because I'm getting rained on here. So let's look at a road. Look at that. <laughs> oh. Alright, I'm going to have to step in this stuff. Woo! <laughs> so the berm is keeping this crap from coming in and flushing our driveway. And I've seen these berms and regular monsoons get washed away in seconds, depending on what. So this may not last long. Here's our road. This is why I built the berm. So on the previous night, check this out. That's a forerunner flowing backwards down flash flood water. And this man almost died. Very serious condition. Here's another view. I know it's crappy video, but that's a forerunner going about 30 miles an hour backwards in a torrent of water. Yeah, I'm the owner of the forerunner that was going down the river. Uh, I made, I, I, I'm, I'm glad to be alive. The river was traveling at least 40 miles an hour is what it felt like. My truck went at least a mile down the river we swept off the road um, I got down to a certain point I was I was yelling out I seen several people on the side where I think they were taking the video um, I was swept down at least a mile or two until my truck flipped over and I was able to crawl out and then the water took me probably another three four miles down past Giannotri close everything I'm gonna try to pull you out close everything and Don't I, I no walked up on a gene tree with nothing nothing but my drawers on full of sand looking crazy and just approached the first car and seen I'm gonna try um, to pull you all the way it's out. craziest I'm story I've ever seen you. I think I went unconscious four or five times um, it's all it's horrible horrible all right that's no laughing matter that is as he said he almost died he cheated death there that's exactly how people die year after year out here under normal uh, monsoon season type of flash floods so this is a tropical storm slash hurricane hillary uh, type of flooding situation he was lucky he floated backwards for a mile in his car then he, he it tossed him out of his car then he got uh, thrown another three or four miles uh, down this uh, this flash flood torrent of water three or four miles uh, and it ripped all his clothes off and he came out in his underwear lucky to be alive people have died and that's that is and that was the major concern about hillary the uh the sheer power of that water when it has nowhere to go very dangerous all right so let's check out the aftermath of hurricane uh Hillary, which hit here as a tropical storm. So essentially here we're gonna I'm gonna as we check things out, I'm gonna rant a little bit. Uh, or, and really rave honestly about the um, drivetrain benefits of a uh, Lexus GX460. Ooh, look at this road up here. It's torn up. <laughs> um but essentially any Toyota with full-time four-wheel drive. I'm going to talk about MTS or multi-terrain select a little bit too. By the way, I took traction control off. Speaking of MTS, um, in case we run into some muddy conditions after all this rain. So the track system in this car doesn't try to um, essentially uh, limit the slip, so to speak. Track is essentially a uh, system that tries to mimic and it does a great job but when I say try to it does it mimics a limited slip differential front and rear this is a little bit of a low spot here so I mean I, I'm not even pressing the gas thing just sails through um, 
But anyway, um, this car does not have MTS. It has crawl and downhill assist or something. No, it doesn't even have crawl. It has downhill assist. Uh, so it doesn't have MTS in the way we like to think of um, multi-terrain select, meaning, um, you know, checking uh, all your uh, modes and whatnot. Sorry, I'm rambling. What I'm trying to say is <laughs> there's no muds, there's no, there's no modes, there's no sand, mud, snow, or anything like this on this vehicle. So what you have essentially is, as far as modes, is VSC, which is vehicle stability control. That's basically fishtail control. Then you have a track, which is a locker, which is awesome. Uh, when you and when I say locker, it simulates a locker and it does it well. Um, so that's a track. And then you have track, which is a limited slip differential. And what MTS does is kind of either applies track or a track and then varies it. So different levels of aggressiveness of track and a track will be applied through your MTO. Oh, here comes our first bottle. Splash time. Here we go. Ow! <laughs> Hope the cam didn't get wet up there. So MTS is not a gimmick, is what I'm trying to ramble and babble out here. And I know I haven't said much, but bear with me. Um, track and a track are the real deal. And MTS is the real deal as well, and it's not a gimmick. So it will vary essentially the gas and or braking of individual wheels to get to maximize your traction in any idea, any particular um, driving situation. So for instance, today is one day after Hillary. So it's the rain just stopped last night and I'm as you can see, the roads are washed out and the biggest, my biggest consideration is mud. So um, if, you, if your Toyota has MTS and you put it in the mud mode, the logic will essentially apply the brakes to slipping wheels as it sees fit according to the quote mud logic. Now what is the mud logic you ask? Well. It's generally agreed upon that in mud, you want wheel spin. You don't want uh, any type of uh, limited slip sort of action. So it will allow essentially your wheels to spin more. And in doing so, you will theoretically be more advantageous in mud or muddy conditions. So all those names, mud, moguls, rock, snow, whatever they are, they do have logics pro programmed in them, and they're not just some random theoretical um, logic. They are tested by Toyota engineers. So don't think of them as, oh, it's just a gimmick. They just play around with the settings and then hope for the best. No, they actually put those MTS settings through their trials. We might see some puddles up here, guys, big splash puddles. Oh, here's a big one. Oh, boy. I'm going to close the sunroof for this one. I'm going to close the windows. Here we go. Hold that thought. We got a big splash, splash again. Now, I don't have the center locked, and might as well take it full bore, but I do have track and track track off and empty all the traction off, so I'm going to get maximum wheel spin here. All right, windows closed. That's the most important part. Here we go. We're going to do it together. Let's not get stuck. Woo! Woo-hoo! Oh baby, spin them wheels. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get the sunroof back down. <laughs> oh. All righty. All righty then. How you doing up here, camera? <laughs> and that's what it's all about. Uh, but you know that. All right, bear with me here. I'm wiping the lens and then we'll get back to our discussion on MTS, which ironically is, uh, that was a good, exa a good uh, example for it. So I hope that's clean.
If not, I'll work on it better next time. Anyway, uh, even if it's not, just hang out and uh, listen to my rambling. So MTS, um, as you saw there, it was a big splashy puddle with mud underneath. So you heard more wheel spin there. As I was gunning it, you heard the engine rev up and those those tires were spinning and displacing the muck in the mud and that's what you want Ooh, look at that that's washed away you want you want that displacement of your the mud from your tires when i mean displace literally displace you want to get you want to fling the mud away from your whatever tires you got regular tires all terrains like we're on now we're on ko2s or mud tires or swamp tires whatever you got doesn't matter the logic is the same you want to fling that mud away from your tires and in doing so you will um, increase the traction by way of not having the tires pack up with mud furthermore you'll displace the road surface itself in other words you'll displace the uh, top layer of mud that's usually more loose and treacherous treacherous <laughs> And you'll get into some more um, firmer stuff, shall we say. And that will allow you to have traction. Yep, we got another one. We're gonna have to do it. One more. Woo! Woo! <laughs> I love the auto wipers. <laughs> I, know, I know I don't have an in interior cam going, but I'm sorry. That is just simply awesome and epic when... Um, these wipers and if you haven't been watching the channel we uh quote upgraded and it is a real upgrade we upgraded let me wipe the lens here we upgraded um the wipers to silicone piaa wipers piaa japanese wipers and they're awesome i mean this windshield i know you can't see it but it is super clean and every time i go through a splish splash here those wipers automatically come on so uh, good stuff. It's one of those Lexus creature comforts, and I know the Land Cruiser 300 or 200, whatever, would have it to both. Lines. You know, top tier stuff has, it and it's it's worth it. But anyway, I'm trying. I'm not I'm trying, to, trying to stay on point here. And eh, these are little small mud puddles. They're not worth going through. <laughs> Let's find some big ones. So <clears throat> the uh, the the. Um, logic behind dis mud and displacing and MTS and all this stuff I know I'm rambling about and not making any sense. But you just saw it. I went through mud. Uh, I got the track traction all off so those tires can spin and fling the mud everywhere. There's logic. Here's my point. There's logic to different conditions. Anybody who off-roads know this. And Toyota and Lexus are certainly uh, aware uh, through their Land Cruiser department that certain conditions do have certain logics and when I say logics I mean how you how you as the driver should approach them and how the car should be configured to uh, approach it so if you're going quote rock crawling you're not gonna turn off all your traction aids in in these Toyota vehicles and start spinning tires and just sending it no you want the uh, a track system to to lock the spinning wheel so power can be sent to the wheel that is clearly off the ground because when you're rock crawling and, and even mogul moguls you're going to have a wheel off the ground and you need that to lock up uh, to carry carry you on so there's a logic to rock crawling moguls dirt sand is similar to mud so there's logics and believe you me when i say that these toyota engineers don't play around with their uh, off-roading trials, I mean, I, I, you know, I can only speculate as to what their budget is, but they, there's no guesswork here. This is all science and engineering. When they take these trucks off-road and go, what is the best logic for mud, sand, snow, moguls, loose rock, gravel, blah, 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 right? And so it's not a gimmick, you know, trust it. Now, it's up to you if you want to use it or not, or just do what I'm doing and just take all the track off and you you do full manual control. That's totally, totally uh, up to you. That's awesome. But um, I just want to reiterate a little puddle. I just want to reiterate how 
there's not um, it's not a gimmick is what I'm is what I'm trying to, to say um, I think it's 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 fair for anybody who sees technology to be afraid of it new technology and say eh, MTS who cares that's just that's just traction control you know these traction controls systems on modern vehicles and I'm not just speaking of Toyota I'm talking anything you got are not <laughs> your old school 90s early 90s traction control systems with which were honestly just VSC or vehicle stability control and that was then mandated by government and that's where people got the, oh it's a babysitter it's just an electronic babysitter turn it off blah 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 that's not this and again this is independent of any manufacturer I don't care what you're driving the traction control systems today are no joke they are not babysitters they make your life better so um, check them out I'm not saying you got to use them but give them a fair chance and you know don't don't write them off again is that crap from the 90s those days are long gone when we talk traction control today and most manufacturers are similar again but I'll use this Toyota for example VSC is your old school traction control that keeps you from fishtailing and slipping. That's the one everybody is familiar with and has bad memories of it. Oh, it took out all the fun. That's not what traction control is outside of VSC. Sorry if I, if I said VCS. VSC. I get it mixed up. <laughs> We're just having a casual rambling today. So if you're, if you're still here, by the way, hit like and subscribe. But anyway. Um, track as I stated <laughs> is a limited slip differential so when we talk a car like this and you go well, why don't they have torsion limited slip differential torsion torque sensing limited so you know we all know torsion limited slip different why don't they have front and rear limited slip differentials no need for it anymore <laughs> the track system we're gonna be on some moguls here as you can see we'll see if we see any more splash splash and bubbles. so far by the way it looks not too bad, but uh, some areas are, are worse than others. We might get to some washed out areas. In fact, I know we will. Um, they don't put limited slip differentials on front and rear axles of most cars and SUVs anymore because the track system or ABS simulator that simulates a limited slip differential is that much better that's it that's the end of the story <laughs> so when when you go well, why doesn't it have a, a torsen front axle or torsen rear axle it's it's unnecessary that your equivalent of track if you don't have a toyota will momentarily pulse the brake or do whatever it got it has to do to send that power over to the other uh, axle just as good if not better than a torsen again I'm talking the front and rear axles this car of course has a torsen center differential one spot where it does make sense to have a real uh, differential but anyway that's a little bit of a tangent so get to know your your car's version of track if you're not into a Toyota if you're on this channel you're probably already a Toyota or Lexus fanboy or girl so um, get to know your track system and how it works on this GX 460 if you don't turn all this stuff off like I have it turned off it will go ahead and um, de just default to track getting back to our MTS you go well you know once you hit your MTS buttons it's now variating and changing the logic of that track in other words it's a smart limited slip differential and it is smart a lot of people go, blah, blah, babysitter, blah, 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 just send it, blah, blah, blah. There's so many videos out on um, YouTube. Oh, we got a battle. Ow! <laughs> I have to keep, keep clean this line. I need a windshield wiper on the cam lens. I can't tell if it's getting wet, so I'm just doing the old school arbitrary 
wipe the lens and hope for the best trick. All right, let's move forward. So you got us, you, there's so many videos was what I was saying on the internet. Um, there's so many videos out there of people demonstrating Toyota's crawl control, which again is, u- is using the ABS system, the track and or a track or and or a combination of them to pulse the brakes and, and move shift power around. And these people are getting out of these unbelievable sand traps or mud traps where you're going, how in the world does it do that? Because if you didn't have that, you'd really be stuck with lock it up and send it or or lock it up and crawl or rock back and forth or some combination. But with these smart um, traction systems, you see people get out of some really squirrely stuff. And so getting back to why it's better than just a plain old limited slip differential or plain old locker is because the sensors and logic in these cars work at, I don't know how many hertz, but it's faster than your mind can go. And it's faster than you can react to what your tires are doing. When you're stuck in mud, you can't see what your tires are doing or wheels are doing. You know, when you get stuck in mud and and you got a, a buddy or someone helping you, You look out and go, are my my wheels going? Am I sinking in? Is that tire going? Is this tire going? Am I sinking? Tell me when I sink so I stop. Guess what? And you do all that stuff so you don't make it worse and you make your situation better. The smart traction control systems, whether again it's crawl or just, let's just call it all MTS, right? They do all that automatically. So for instance, you know, if I'm in a sand trap and you know, and I've almost sunk in sand and mud countless times. And I have someone there, usually I'm trying to help someone out and then I'm getting stuck too. <laughs> so I'm yelling at them exactly what I just just said, you know, let me know when I sink. If you see this tire this, tell me to do that, you know, and then I am adjusting. But I can't see. All I can do is hear and try to feel for the sink and guess and interpolate what's going on with the vehicle in that stuck situation. But these track or MT, MTS is what we're going to call it. <laughs> these MTS systems now do all that automatically and at such a fast uh, rate between sensor, between sensing through the wheel sensing sensors and actuating through your boosted ABS actuators, it's faster than any human could ever wish or think to do in many situations. So I know this is seeming like a big sale on traction control. It's just to kind of bring it into the real world and just say, don't discount MTS as a gimmick. And if it's something that you think you don't need or don't want, that's again, fair. But uh, again, I'll say, check out the anecdotes. I mean, they're really not anecdotes. When you see somebody get out of a sand and mud trap using the MTS, on youtube that's the proof the proof is in the pictures so we got you know again this could turn to mud at any point down here so we're just going to kind of see and you know (laughs) would i feel better with mts and on this gx460 yeah i would i really really would feel better with mts because that would let me know or I'd, i'd feel that I'd feel that if I had MTS in a mud mode right now, that I would have an extra advantage because mud is one of the the more trickier ones, like I said, to mud and loose sand particularly, are uh, tricky to do manually (laughs) or on your own. Not saying you can't, it's just if a computer and MTS can do it for you, it's a benefit. It takes the stress out of it. That's why it was engineered. But Toyota and Japanese companies in general are not really, I don't know if it's the culture, and I'm going to just go ahead and say I think it, a lot of it is cultural, but a lot of um, the Japanese marketing and, and Japanese, um, a lot of Japanese marketing, I mean, that's, that's the only way I could say it, is is very humble. So I think if, you know, 
let's let's just say this. What what does Ford call them? Goat modes or something like that. You know, they're really boastful. Goat one, and, and if you don't know what goat is, that's Fords. I think on their Bronco, there. If I got this mixed up in its Jeep, forgive me. But you get what I'm saying. Either Ford or Jeep, I think calls them goat modes. Go anywhere traction or something, and that's their that's their marketing behind MTS, and. <laughs> Japanese just don't do it that way for whatever reason again maybe it's cultural they just don't hype it up and so people Americans when I say people tend to dismiss Japanese Toyota Lexus MTS as eh, it's just an afterthought that's just a little extra they threw in when if they were to throw this stuff through a uh, speaking of moguls um, if they were to throw this MTS system through an American marker it would have something like you know it would be named something like goat or <laughs> something ridiculous that Americans can relate to that really um, exemplifies or um, conjures the amount of confidence and awesomeness in the system. MTS doesn't sound exciting to you. Neither does a track, neither does track, neither does KDSS, neither does AHC, neither does AVS. <laughs> It all sounds like a bunch of nonsense, but um, don't let the name fool you is the is the point of what I'm saying here. The MTS is now I've never tried any any of the goat modes, but uh, people have said they're awesome. But Toyota's got its own thing with uh, their plain vanilla sounding MTS. There are no joke modes. And the new Land Cruiser 300 and soon the Lexus GX 550 is going to have a new auto mode where it reads the road surfaces like I'm going on now, where we're kind of going back and forth between loose, and it's not really loose sand today, but moguls and then mud and then some puddles. It'll read the road and it'll, it'll interpolate what it is and change, again, that track system varying how those actuators react. Oh, somebody went down here. I can see tracks. Um, it'll change how all that reacts in order for you to have a more pleasant driving experience. In fact, it'll change the socks through the AVS system, adaptive variable suspension. So it's changing your shock valving in real time. This is some serious stuff. In my opinion, they just, they meaning Toyota and Lexus, they just don't market it well. They don't hype it up. And it's a shame that people pass it off. Now, key to MTS is, and off-roading in general, is the best off-roading advice I ever got by an experienced off-roader, which is to be configured before your situation, whatever that means for your car. Now, if you got auto MTS and you're going out on a day like today, great. Put it in auto and hit the road. I don't have that. So I need to be configured, which means I took my traction control off before we even started. That allows that wheel spin that I was rambling about in the beginning of this video. So be configured ahead of time. That's key to off-roading. Best off-roading advice that any experienced off-roader would give you. And I think that that's exactly what Toyota was after with their whole MTS stuff, especially the new auto feature is solving that biggest new, new off-roader mistake is not being configured. You see so many automotive journalists out there getting in off-road vehicles, whether they're all-wheel drive Subarus or, or um, you know, Toyotas like this or Jeeps or whatever. <laughs> they go, they get their press vehicle, they take it to their off-road course, and they leave it in frickin' two-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive, and they proceed to summarily get themselves stuck. Why? Because, frankly, they're not experienced offers. Now, this is not any sort of diss. It's a noob mistake that everybody, including myself, and any off experienced off-roader does when they're new. They stay in default street mode, whatever that is. Say you're in a Jeep and it's just rear-wheel drive. And then they'll hit the trail in real world drive and then get stuck. And then they'll start hitting buttons and f fishing around for what's going to save them out of their situation. When the reality of the situation is you want to be, most important role, 
ever configured beforehand. So you see a lot of automotive journalists get into brand new cars and, and just make them look really bad by, quote, driver error. Now, getting back to MTS, what am I saying? This whole auto MTS, or MTS in general, or track or, or any traction aid in general, is meant to help you there especially new drivers who don't get configured ahead of time. It's, it's there to pre-configure you for your driving situation. If you ask me, I think auto MTS is going to be the future. I think it in the future, at least on Toyota vehicles, maybe many other vehicles, you're going to see auto MTS default unless you command it to turn off or command it to not be a part of the equation and it'll just auto MTS all the time <laughs> that will save a lot of people a lot of quote inexperienced off-roaders from a lot of trouble off-road and I think <laughs> and I know I'm rambling so forgive me but Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh no, oh. Ow! <laughs> we need an auto puddle, we need an auto puddle alert up in here. <laughs> puddle ahead, splash, <laughs> splish splash ahead. Well, that was fun. Wipe the lens, bear with me. All right, a, um, this road's torn up pretty good. <clears throat> yeah, auto, uh, <laughs> auto, auto everything. But um, I think you're going to see a move to uh, automated traction features because being not configured is the biggest new mistake, period. Even for experienced off-roaders, being not configured. At any point, this could change into something I'm not prepared for. Now, likely it's not because I'm familiar with the area. But let's say I was on a trail doing this right now. You know, I would be, you know, I'd be up against any, like a, a trail I wasn't familiar with. I'd be up against any potential of variables. And you could get caught off guard, even a, quote, experienced off-roader. And next thing you know, you're trapped because, oops, I didn't have my diff locked or I didn't approach at a certain rpm enough wheel spin blah 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 yada you know you get you get the point i'm not configured so in that scenario auto in nps or mts excuse me <laughs> would be advantageous let's go this way um auto mts would be advantageous by the way if you're still hanging out we're gonna we're gonna hit some muddier stuff here in a second um, but let's say you don't have MTS, okay? Well, that's what I'm doing today. What would you do? Here's the general rule. General rule is in mud and soft sand. And when I say soft sand, wow, look at that, that's torn up. When I say soft sand, I mean sugar sand. So like uh, white sugar, refined sugar, that type of sand. I'm not talking about hard dirt sand. But anyway, in mud and soft sand, you turn your track off all your traction aids off and you let the wheels rip so that's what I, that's how i am configured now so if i do come across a patch of mud or a splash puddle the wheels again will displace the loose stuff both from the road surface and the tire tread itself and allow you to have more traction you also of course approach this loose stuff with more momentum that sort of thing though there are ways and methods to crawl out of both mud and sand. But for the sake of simplification, if you don't have MTS and you find yourself in a messy mud, there's a lot of people stuck at the dry lake down there today, which we're not going, because <laughs> that is one big mud trap. Five vehicles were stuck there <laughs> last night, so it was pretty intense. And, that, and when I say last night, I mean when Hillary was pouring. That's what I mean by last night. <laughs> so, you're gonna um, have your track traction aids off in mud and loose sand. That's the general gist of it, if you don't have MTS. 
Now, what about everything else? Moguls, rock, this, that, and the other. Um, just, just leave track on. In other words, leave all your traction aids on. You can lock your center diff or leave it unlocked, whatever you want, and just drive. The track in a <laughs> the track system in this vehicle, this GX460, without MTS, defaults to a middle of the road type of limited slip differential. In other words, it's it, in normal uh, track mode without MTS, such as on this GX460 Premium Edition. It's just like having a medium level limited slip differential, which means it'll allow some slip, but not too much. And what's my, oh, look at the horses. They survived the, the hurricane. Hey, horses. Um, you see we're getting in some muddy stuff, but that, that uh, middle ground track or middle ground limited slip differential is a literal best of all worlds. So it's, it's a middle road that is good for most situations. Um, and that's not to take away from what MTS can do if your car does have MTS. I'm just saying if you don't have MTS, don't sweat it because, ooh, look at all the dirt on the road. See all this mess? I'm going to go down a messy road here. Now I got my traction stuff off and I'm on the road. Full-time four-wheel drive. I don't have anything locked. I don't have the center lock. Uh, but we're going to check out some bad roads up here. Up ahead to the left is a notoriously bad spot. I'm going to check it out. I don't, I, I, I don't even know if I'll go down it out of fear of getting stuck, but we'll see. But if you don't um, have MTS and you're not in mud or loose sand, just drive as normal. It will default to middle of the ground track, which essentially uh, makes your front and rear axles act as limited slip differentials. I mean, you could you could technically say that they're they would be torque sensing, you know, because the wheel sensors are definitely at play in your default track set system. It's don't think these systems, for example, are dumb. In other words, the logic is programmed with some pretty good intelligence. So for instance, I'm going on the main road now for a second here. We're gonna turn off in a real shortly here, so hold on. Oh, Desert Flower, this is it. I'm gonna turn off right now. Now this is gonna be bad, potentially. Is it Desert Flower? No, it's Sunrise. Let's go up to Sunrise. That's Desert Flower. That one's not too bad. We're gonna go up to Sunrise. It's gonna be, and we're gonna make a left turn here in a second. The logic knows a lot talking about track it knows for instance now i'm going 50 miles an hour so it assumes you know it knows i'm going 50 it doesn't assume it knows i'm going 50 miles an hour so if it feels a wheel slip on one of these patches of sand it knows to break it enough based on the vehicle speed the momentum whatever else is going my it knows my throttle it knows my steering angle it knows the um the pitch and roll and yaw sensors in, in this car you know it knows so much more than a human can know. So, again, toting the benefits of these traction systems. Do not discount them. Likewise, when I slow down here in a second, and we're going to be turning again. Oh, is this it? Yep, this is it. See these cars parked here? They don't want to go where we're about to go. Those cars over there park there because they get stuck on um, this road here. Let's see how bad it is. So these people actually live across the street here down this road. So again, I got traction off. So, you know, I wish I had mud here, but let's say I didn't, I had traction control on um, and it's, it'll be in track mode. If I, and it'll, whoo, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to get the speed up here. Look at this mud. It's where everybody gets stuck. So Eh, so far, it sounds good, but whoop, what was that? That wasn't part of my car. But see this muddy mess? You know, this, if you had your track system on, it knows that you're going X amount of speeds. It knows the car is gyrating around. Uh, it's pretty It's pretty smart. It's not just a static, you know, I, it, where it reads, 
the wheel sensor and then apply the brakes and that's it. It's reading countless sensors. No, I don't know the exact breakdown, <laughs> but I do know more sensors than, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm amazed by how effortless that was. People get trapped, I, uh, pull people out of that. And that's after Hillary. But it has, it's reading more sensors than you might think. I wish I knew all the sensors, but um, I don't think Lexus publishes all of that. But we do know that there's more sensors in this current generation GX than you might think. Such as pitch, roll, you know, it sounds like, a air, like we're talking about an airplane. <laughs> you know, it, it knows so much. And that's all of that's coming together to help you get out of squirrely situations. Looks like a piece of wood here. Yeah, somebody must got trapped here. Ooh, that's washed away good. But the GX is just laughing at it without any track control on at all. So what can we say? Um, so if there's any takeaway from this whole storm experience, though we didn't get hit, thankfully, as bad as it could have been, and it could have been a lot worse, is uh, it's just it's just a, a, a rave about modern traction systems. I, I do think that too many people discount the new stuff based on the old stuff, new technology. But as we all know, what you don't understand what you don't understand, you uh, tend to discount. And I think a lot of people do that. And it was my, my hope today and the point of today's video is to kind of help you get a better understanding of all this, all these, what they used to call electronic nannies and electronic babysitters. Gone are those days. <laughs> this is the real deal. You know, they, they are, you know, what's the way to put it? They're incorporating way more inputs than the old, the old systems. That's a big berm there. We could go that way for fun. They're incorporating way more inputs. That's the, the simple way, you know, the, the ancient, um, VSC, Vehicle Stability Control, the ancient, washed up pretty good. Um, the ancient systems just used wheel speed sensors, that's it. Then they started using your steering angle sensor. There's a sensor in your steering to tell if your wheel's going this way, okay? Then they started using uh, your accelerated pedal sensor. Is the person commanding gas or has the person let off the gas they're reading what gear you're in and they started adding gears and they started again pitch y'all roll and <laughs> you know they're putting your whole vehicle in a 3d space and now they're reading the road <laughs> both current and ahead to tell what's going on you got shock position sensors especially in an avs equipped car and again who knows what else I am, that's by no means a comprehensive list. The point is, it's monitoring a lot of stuff and it's objectively helping you. And the good part is, if you don't believe anything or you don't care, I don't, I don't trust track control, it's a bunch of Manny and babysitter, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to use it. You could turn it off like I'm doing now. I got mine off just because it's advantageous in mud for this particular setup. but. Um, truly, I would if I had MTS, I'd hit hit the mud setting. All right, enough rambling today about nothing. Okay, now I hope I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the video. Again, please remember to support the channel by liking and subscribing. Hit super thanks if for some reason you're super thankful. It does help the channel. And uh, have a great great day. <laughs>
just for your pick up the sword on this conclusion in your board. Watch out, yeah, sweet snow is the deal. As she shouted, it's the funky lesson one to the grill. I should have known that something wasn't right in walking. The biggity biggity boom was just ticking and clocking. A night boy and plaid is passed from his dad. Another straight in the fight, man, but he wasn't from the right clan. To stop all the nonsense, the fences, my defense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the mood is daily dense. Time has passed on, but it's been a million days. We're still nice and divided, running.